name is Alisa, and today I have a very special friend for you guys to meet. Um, one of my favorite reptiles to work with are snakes. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Jiffy here, and Jiffy is a horn snake. We're going to kind of be focusing on senses and the way that snakes navigate their environment via senses. So the one thing that she's doing right now that you can see she's doing really, really well is she's sticking out her tongue. Now, if you guys are watching at home, I bet a lot of you might have a guess as to what she's doing while sticking her tongue out. So wait, if you guys want to put in the comments what you think that she's doing by sticking her tongue out. If you guys said smelling, you are correct. So she is smelling with her tongue. Obviously humans, we smell with our noses, but her tongue works in a very similar way to a human nose. So if you can see her tongue is forked, that means that it splits off into two directions at the end of her tongue. Our tongues do not look like that. That would be a little strange, right? But her tongue does. And what she's doing is kind of sensing the air around her. There are scent particles floating in the air, microscopic. So you need a microscope in order to see them. They're just so small, but everything gives off, gives off a scent. This rock, this plant, this twig, the dirt, the tablecloth, the air around her is giving off different scents. So when she's sticking her tongue out in the air, all of those microscopic scent particles are attaching to the tip of her tongue. When she brings her tongue back into her mouth, she flicks the roof of her mouth and it touches something called a Jacobson's organ. Now the Jacobson's organ in a snake is very similar to a vomeronasal organ in people. So if you touch the bridge of your nose directly in between your eyes back there, there's an organ that helps you identify different smells. And that's what the Jacobson's organ does for snakes. So if a snake slithers around, and it sticks its tongue out and to the left is a nice ripe juicy apple and then to the right there's a plump soft fuzzy mouth they're going to smell those scents at the same time that's what that split tongue does it helps her to smell in two different directions at once she's going to not go towards the apple but towards that plump mouse she is a carnivore so she's going to be eating meat these guys will swallow their prey whole. Corn snakes are a subspecies of rat snake. So rat snakes are really cool because they do a lot of different behavioral things to protect themselves. If you look at her, her coloration and pattern is very similar to that of the venomous copperhead. Unfortunately, corn snakes are often mistaken for venomous copperheads and therefore are killed because people think they're dangerous. These guys are not venomous. They are actually a very calm and docile species of snake. That means they are mild tempered, very calm, not often aggressive. So these guys are going to be doing a couple of different things to try and ward off predators, but particularly if they're often mistaken for other species of venomous snakes. It looks like she's digging in the dirt, which I think is the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I think that's adorable. <laughs> she's got a little dirt hat. <laughs> oh, Jiffy, you knew you were on camera today, so you're gonna be really cute. Um, anyway, I digress. So these guys will do what black rat snakes do, and they will take their tail and they will shake it under leaf litter. And that will help to mimic a rattlesnake. So they're trying to look like venomous snakes so that other animals will stay away. It's just unfortunate that people realize that they look like the copperhead and therefore they often get killed by people. But the coloration that is similar to a copperhead is them trying to pretend like they're a venomous snake. So the same thing with them shaking their tail under leaf litter to make it sound like a rattle from a rattlesnake. Now, if I were to go like this and tap gently on the table, now, Jiffy's not going to do it because she is not afraid of us, but usually snakes would slither away if we were to make some vibrations um, nearby. That is because these guys do not have ears. 
So the way that they navigate via hearing is actually through vibration. So if you're going to get a snake out that is maybe a little bit hesitant or nervous, you shouldn't stick your fingers near its face and tap, but you can always tap very gently in the surrounding dirt just so that they know that you're there. And this is obviously for captive snakes. Best to leave the wild snakes alone, especially if you don't know if they're venomous or not. But these guys, they feel through vibrations. So when they're slithering around, if someone comes hiking and she was a wild snake and they were to stomp on the dirt, that snake would be able to feel those vibrations and then they would be able to slither away. These guys have relatively decent eyesight. Weird thing about snakes, they don't have eyelids, which is pretty weird. So we take a look at her beautiful little eyes. They have a scale that goes over them, but they don't have eyelids. So when these guys shed their skin in order to get bigger and to grow, they actually shed what we call eye caps along with that shed. So the shed that is over her eyes will also come off. And that's actually something really important to look for when snakes shed is their eye caps. So um, notorious snakes that are horrible shedders are ball pythons, and they often um, have what we call retained eye caps. That means when they shed, the shed over their eyes unfortunately sticks and stays on their eyes. And if they have enough layers of retained eye caps, they can actually um, have, unfortunately get permanent eye damage. They could become blind um, or not be able to see very well because of those layers of old scales that are on their eyes. Where'd you go? Are you peeping your head out? You, oh, you're under that. You got a leaf hat. How cute. <laughs> now, Jiffy here, um, aside from mimicking a venomous snake, feeling vibration, smelling with her tongue, and seeing with her eyes, all of these senses that help her to navigate her surroundings. Once she has captured her prey, these guys are a constrictor. So um, in the black, uh, I'm sorry, in the rat species, rat snake species, um, these guys are constrictors. So they're going to be wrapping around their prey and then they're going to suffocate their prey until they are no longer alive and then they swallow them whole. So I'm going to take my mask off for just a second. I want you guys to look at my face and I want you guys at home to do something similar to what I'm doing, okay? I want you guys to take your pointer finger and I have an earring right here. And I want you guys to take your finger and put it right in front of your ear. Don't put it in your ear because that hurts, but put it in front of your ear. And I want you guys to open your mouth as wide as you can and then close your mouth and open it and close your mouth. So if you guys did that at home, I bet you guys could feel that bone move. Right here is where our upper jaw and our lower jaw connect. So if I pretend for a second that my hands are Jiffy's mouth, she can extend her jaws to open 180 degrees or a straight line. She can open her mouth that wide and that helps her to swallow things that are about the widest part of her body or about three times the size of her head. These guys have backward facing teeth. Snakes have backward facing teeth in order to help them to push big meals down their throats. That's why they face backwards. Um, and these guys don't have these large fangs filled with venom sacs because they are non-venomous, but instead they have these small razor sharp teeth that they use to push the mice down their bellies. Now, a cool thing about these guys, um, uh, actually rather a common misconception rather, is people think that these guys eat corn because they're called corn snakes. They don't eat corn, I promise you. The reason why they're called corn snakes is because they're often found in corn fields. So these guys are going to be eating the things that like to eat corn. So mice like to eat corn. Corn is sweet. And these guys are going to be hunting those things that are going to be eating the corn. So that's why these guys are called corn snakes. You can find them around here. They're more found farther south and central United States. So more so Virginia onward down to Florida and then outward west toward um, uh, Texas. Um, but you can find these guys around here. Uh, they do lay eggs, not all snakes do. Snakes are pretty cool in that they have lots of different types of uh, reproduction. So 
You can be oviparous, where you lay just eggs. You can be viviparous. A viviparous snake is a snake that gives live birth. And then you can also be ovoviviparous, which is where you have eggs in your body, but then they come out live. It's a very strange thing. So these guys are oviparous. That means they lay eggs and in a clutch, um, a clutch is uh, a group of eggs. They can lay anywhere between 12 and 24 eggs. So that's a decent amount of eggs. Um, one common question I get is how long she is. And you know what? We haven't measured her in quite some time. So I think what we're going to do, I have a tape measure here. And I think as she's navigating around, um, we'll, we'll try and see how long she is. And I'll show you guys how to properly measure a snake. Um, it's a little difficult because they're very wiggly. And what you have to do is you have to hold your place marker um, while they are moving. So, hi, here we go, Jiffy. Let me see how long you are. Let's see, make sure we're on inches. There we go, inches. Already got ourselves wrapped around in her. Okay, I'm gonna go from her. And then while you're, while you're measuring, you want to make sure that you hold the measuring tape in place and then you can let go of the rest. But you want to make sure that you hold it in place so that you know where your mark is, particularly because these guys like to move. We're going to keep going. How about we get back on the table there? There you go. That's better. and a half inches, so 12, 24, 36, 48, so 4 feet plus 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, so she is 4 and a half feet, well, that's really well. <laughs> 4 and a half feet, um, which is pretty long for, for a snake. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about before we go and uh, answer any questions that you have, so if you guys have any questions about Jiffy the corn snake, please put them in the chat now. So that when I'm done talking about our last topic, you guys can um, ask me anything that you would like and I'll try my best to answer. Um, these guys are a very common species of pet snake. Now, if you've watched our Zoo School Live episodes before, you know that I always, always, always say before you get a pet, particularly those that I say are okay pets, you have to do your research. These guys, because they are a docile, mild-tempered, calm species of snake, they are often used as pets. So these guys and ball pythons are two species of snakes that are very, very common um, pet snakes for starter snake parents. That being said, you have to be okay with having frozen mice in your freezer to feed your snake. You have to make sure that you have an enclosure that is big enough to hold this snake. She's four and a half feet long. Her enclosure up in our reptile room is slightly less than the length of this table. That is a big enclosure. And the most expensive part, aside from the enclosure itself, lighting. Lighting, temperature, humidity gauges, um, UV bulbs, all of these things break quite often and you have to make sure that you replace them because these guys are reptiles, they're ectotherms. So heat is very, very important for them to be able to stay nice and healthy. And in the wild, interestingly enough, it's not age that determines whether or not these guys will reproduce, it's actually size. So once they hit a certain size, then they're able to reproduce. Now we're not going to have her reproduce because we don't have a male suitor for Jiffy. We also don't have the capacity to house 24 little adorable uh, snakes. Um, but as long as you do your research, these guys can make good pets, but you have to remember that their housing is pretty expensive. Um, so I guess one more thing before questions, 
The reason why Jiffy is called Jiffy is because she was left outside of the zoo in a Jiffy Pop popcorn bag. So that is why she's named Jiffy. Um, if you've met Buckets before, he was found in a, put in a bucket outside of the zoo, and that's why he's named Buckets. Um, that being said, please do not leave any animals that you find in the wild outside of the zoo. Your best thing to do is either leave it be, or if you think it's injured, is to call your local rehabilitation center or your wildlife center nearby. Um, zoos, as much as we would love to take in all of the animals, we just don't have the capacity to do so. Um, so we made an exception for Jiffy, but best thing to do is definitely call your local rehab. All right, guys, so with that, I'm going to answer any questions that you guys may have. Um, Marissa's going to look through to see if we have any questions, and I will try my best to answer any that you might have. All right. Oh, it looks like uh, Julia here just found a corn snake in her basement a couple nights ago. Oh my goodness! Yeah, not nearly as big as our friend Jiffy, um, but their neighbor helped to um, safely put it outside. That's a phenomenal story. I'm so glad that you guys put it outside. These guys, it looks like Jiffy wants to hang out with our tiger friend. Um, these guys are so important to have in your backyards or in your farms because they eat all of those rodents that can carry diseases. So these guys are super important. So I'm really glad that that was that snake was safely relocated outside. That's awesome, Julia. Thank you for sharing. Looks like we don't have too many questions. It did look like we had some stars sent from Carl. Thank you very much, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Really appreciate that. Jiffy, thanks you too. Oh, and some stars from Denise as well. Thank you so very much. Hi again, Mom. Thank you for the stars. <laughs> Alrighty. Ooh, someone was curious. How heavy is he? It looks like from Robin. Oh, Robin. Ah, oh, you know, I wish I had a scale over here and then we could actually try and weigh her. But I want to say... Oh, gosh. It's, it's is about it a pound. It's about a pound. About a pound. She's pretty darn light. Um... You can see the girthiest part of her body, about that big. So definitely different than our ball pythons that are about that big around, so they have a lot more muscle to them. So yeah, she's pretty light. She's a lot longer than she is heavy. Great question. Alrighty, anybody else? Oh, are there other snakes in cornfields? Jessica would like to know. Jessica, awesome question. Are there other snakes in cornfields? So, um, some Common snakes around our area that you could find in a cornfield would be black rat snakes, milk snakes, corn snakes. Um, if you have the unfortunate uh, circumstance of encountering a water snake, if your farm is near water, um, those are a much more aggressive species than corn snakes. So best to leave those guys be. Um, we have 21 different species of we have snakes, species, different here, species of snakes here, here in Pennsylvania. Well, yep. Um, I don't think rattlesnakes are often going to be in your cornfields. Those guys stick more towards the rocky mountains. Um, so usually the snakes that you're going to find in cornfields are going to be your helpful friends. The ones that are going to be eating those mice. So you don't really have to worry about those. And uh, similar, similarly, if you have a farm or you're near a farm, milk snakes that often can be also found at farms are called milk snakes, not because they drink the milk out of cows, but because they are often found on farms. All right, so it looks like um, Tiffany was curious how old, oh, I'm sorry, Brantley was actually curious how old Jiffy is. Great question, Brantley. So um, we're not exactly sure. Now, Jiffy was, believe it or not, if you look at her tail, this is as long as her tail is. That's it, it's pretty short. She was this thin when we first got her. She was really, really teeny tiny. Um, but because she was dropped off at the front of the zoo, we're not sure her exact age. However, she was dropped off at the zoo in 2015, so we've had her for five years. So she's at least five years old, which is an adult for um, a corn snake. These guys will only live to be about six or eight in the wild, but they've been known to live over 20 years in human care in captivity. All right, we have a few more questions. Oh, it looks like... Uh, Robin was curious, um, what's his diet? Ooh, so um, Jiffy here gets mice. Now, um, 
The easiest and most humane way is to have frozen mice, which is what we give to Drippy. We thaw that mouse out so that it's nice and warm. Uh, snakes are more likely to eat a warm um, item. They can sense the heat from that animal, so we warm up that mouse. Um, but it's best to give them things that are already dead for multiple reasons. Um, rodents have very, very strong and nasty bites and they carry diseases. So if a rodent like a mouse were to bite our snake, our snake could get hurt. Also, mice are also very, very good at escaping. So if our mouse were to escape, we might think, oh, well, Dippy ate, when in reality the mouse escaped and then she could get hungry. Um, so lots of different reasons for why we give these guys already um, dead mice. So that's what she gets here at the zoo. Right, and Maria was curious, is Jiffy, is Jiffy normally this active? <laughs> she is on the move today. <laughs> um, that's a really good question. It depends. Um, I have not seen her this active in quite some time, to be honest. So this is really good to see. Uh, I really love the fact that she was digging through some dirt. That was adorable. And these guys uh, will dig, not as much as our hognose snake like Hoggle, who you might have met who dig in the sand. Um, but no, I haven't seen her be this active in quite some time, so it's really nice to see. All right, and I think that that's just about all the questions that we have for today. All right, guys. Well, I really appreciate you guys tuning in to Zoo School, learning about Jiffy. Um, we really appreciate all of your views, your likes, and your stars. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support the zoo. Um, we wouldn't be here without you guys. So thank you so much. Please make sure to tune in on Thursday for our next episode. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.